Last September, I was spent all day in junior high. I got into my car, I called my wife on her cell phone, and I started crying because of the teaching that I had seen go on all day long in this particular junior high school. And I said to her, I don't know if there's really any hope. I don't know what we're going to do. And then, you know, um, Jack Jennings, when he came out with his article on us, we have a civil right to good education, I'm like, yes, we do, and I'm not seeing it. That's why I was crying. And, um, and he said, you know what, the state standards don't matter. And that really made me think, well, then what is going to matter? And the 2012 Brown Report came out. And when the Brown Report came out, they literally said, the empirical evidence suggests the Common Core will have little effect on American students' achievement. Little effect. The nation will have to look elsewhere. And I was like, okay, so what is the elsewhere that you and I are going to have to do? What is it going to take for us to get serious that after 20 years of standards reform, we just don't seem to be all that serious about it? It sort of happens. If you want to do it. But guess what? There were at least six teachers in that junior high that didn't say, hey, we're not, we don't want the other day. I saw Donnie use that, my picture. I <laughs> and I'm like, because this is what I saw all day. And I was like, really? Really? I mean, this is what made me cry. It's 2012. Where's all the things that we've talked about in this conference? What kind of change is going to be necessary to make the Common Core actually be implemented? Um, and so that made me think, about this idea that there really are these five significant second order paradigms of change. And I just want to share with you what these five are. Now, this is actually an hour talk, so it's impressive that I can do it without this. Um, but number one is going to have to be collaboration, the paradigm of collaboration. I just want to say that about this. It was an equity issue to erase the wide variance in how kids learn because the teachers have such a wide variance in their own knowledge gap. And I want to encourage you in that. We are going to have to be willing to take a stand as math teachers to say we must also become highly relational human beings. We, can, we must teach ourselves and others how to actually relate and work with one another better because that's what it's going to take. Poverty has a .57 effect size on student learning in a negative way. But working as a professional learning community, working together has a .63 effect size on student achievement in a positive way. And that's a significant impact. Because what happens when we work together is we begin to erase certain equities. The equity of selection and implementation of tasks. So that all those things we just heard, we'll all actually do it, not just those that feel like it. We will all integrate technology. We will all use assessments that are rich and deep and meaningful. We'll not only just, and I really like this cartoon, um, I actually used it in my talk the other day, but, but the, you know, we'll, we'll not only try to solve the problem by ourselves, but we will huddle up, and when we huddle up, and we think about it, we'll solve the problem together. <laughs> because what a learning community requires is inter Are you married? You actually have to like be interdependent with your spouse for it to be successful, right? I mean, you can't just do whatever you feel like doing. You actually have to get permission from the other person. <laughs> well, at least I do. <laughs> the second paradigm is a paradigm of instruction. We are going to have to be willing to not just say, hey, it's all about the woe and the aha and the discovery moment. It is also about procedural fluency, too. It's about both. And learning how to design lessons and instruction that, from my point of view, is from what I call the student's point of view. I'm not sure when that's coming up. There it is. So this whole idea that we don't lesson plan from our point of view, but from the student. What will the students do at the Scarborough lesson? What will the students be doing during the examples? What will the students be doing during the discovery? What will the students be doing so that it models those particular practices? The third paradigm is the paradigm of content. We've had a lot of discussion on this at this conference. But delivering those understanding standards is going to be a ton of work. And we'll have to demand that it happens. The fourth one is the paradigm of assessment. If we have any great failure in our country right now in mathematics education, it's that our assessment is an end always. It is not a means that is part of a formative cycle of learning. And one of the things I want you to think of when you see this picture of the guy riding a surfboard is the surfboard is your assessment instruments, the tests and quizzes and the stuff we do. And you want to have a good surfboard, but you also have to have a great way to deliver that surfboard so that it's successful. A great assessment process. Are you willing to push on that? And the best thing I can say here is the number one way that we know how effective your school district is, or your school, or your classroom, is its response to failure. It's the number one way. What is your response to failure? What we hope is that it will be a required response to failure. And finally, the one thing I would suggest is you take it one paradigm at a time. I don't know if you can see the cartoon. Since this point, I'm taking it one paradigm at a time. So of these five paradigms, pick one and go after it, and go after it really well. I only show, up the, show these pictures because I've been working on this for the last year, and I'm 61 years old, and I've had two major heart surgeries. 
So I decided that at my age, I was going to dedicate my life to one final push to try to make this happen. And I hope you will join me in that effort, and we will make this thing happen so that in 2015, our kids are not going to be able to do it. Thank you.